Bottas, of course, had a minor penalty, three place penalty for uh, spinning in the pit lane. Nice. They've dominated the sport for the basically all of the hybrid era, and they're saying that they're not going to develop the car any further this season. I'm not buying it. It's in between a little bit of a, a Valtteri Bottas and Pierre Gasly dressing as well on that uh, on that side. He still feels like Mercedes didn't want him to win. <laughs> Thanks for joining us and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video and hit the bell if you like what you're seeing. Uh, every little helps and we really appreciate your support. So we're here today to talk about the Styrian Grand Prix that took place last weekend. And of course this is almost like round one of a double header because of course we have the Austrian Grand Prix at the very same track, the Red Bull arena, whatever you want to call it, coming up um, this coming weekend. And um, are we going to see a repeat of the result again? I'm not so sure. Um, it will certainly be interesting to see how it plays out. It looks like Red Bull are really on the ascendancy at the moment, uh, as you can see on the screen. Four in a row for Red Bull. Who would have thought it pre-season? So it's really, really good going for Red Bull at the moment. And Max Verstappen is... Um, He's stretching his advantage ever so slightly. As I stated before, it was a real missed opportunity for them with the uh, with the Styrian, uh, not the Styrian. Of course, we're talking about Styrian with the Azerbaijan Grand Prix and uh, what could have been for Red Bull there. Uh, but you know, it was a missed opportunity, but also it was a missed opportunity for uh, Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes as well and Bottas didn't have a good race that race um all right let's see if we can get straight into it so uh before i get into my reaction um i did just want to cover the fact that we had um verstappen hamilton perez one two three at the french grand prix uh, so nothing too unusual about that one uh, next up, of course, the driver standings as we were heading into the Styrian Grand Prix. So Max Verstappen was leading the way on 131 points with Lewis Hamilton in second place on 119 points. And uh, Sergio Perez then was in third place on 84 points. Um, and you can see, look at that, Valtteri Bottas has dropped down to fifth uh, below Lando Norris. Of course, that was that was after the French Grand Prix. That was all on the lead in. Looking very quickly at the constructors, you can see Red Bull, of course, were leading the championship and Mercedes in second place. So let's get to it. So very solid qualifying session from Max Verstappen, this time for once. Thankfully, we didn't have any stoppages towards the end and we got to see all of the final run from uh, the drivers, well, the majority of the drivers at least. And um, yeah, it, it, it was... Uh, a wholesome qualifying what can i say um it went as expected uh verstappen really he he had um he had good speed he had an advantage over mercedes for most of the weekend and that's how it turned out during qualifying hamilton was able to put himself into second place uh well actually hamilton was able to put himself into third place it was bottas who put himself into second place so out qualified hamilton bottas of course had a minor penalty, three place penalty for uh, spinning in the pit lane. Nice. Uh, you don't uh, you don't see that one every day, but there you go. Um, Bottas trying to keep us entertained, and I know I've personally been complaining a lot about uh, about what he's been doing in recent races. So you know that helps. That helps. It mixes it up a little bit as well because that pushed Norris up into third place and uh, promoted Perez as well into fourth place, so directly ahead of, of uh, Bottas. So both the Red Bull and Mercedes number two drivers would have a chance to go fighting with each other. Gasly was so strong all weekend in the lead up to the race. You know, his qualifying was very good, but his pace in the free practice sessions was also very good. Um, it's just unfortunate the way it turned out after that. As you saw, it was Max Verstappen on pole position. Fantastic for Max. Uh, he deserved that. I know he was unlucky in a couple of races in the lead up to this uh, with uh, with getting pole position. And then when it came to the race itself, we almost had an identical 1-2-3 to the previous race. Just switch out Bottas with um, 
Perez, or I should say the other way around. So Perez uh, came forth and he was supremely close to uh, to Bottas. Verstappen had quite a commanding win, actually. It was one of his better win wins so far this season. Um, I haven't seen him dominate a race that much uh, so far. So that was very, very good for uh, for Verstappen. And um, yeah, it's, it's exciting for the championship, but is it also a little bit ominous for the championship? Um, that's that's what we need to think about. Uh, look, here's the uh, finishing order from the Styrian Grand Prix. Um, Verstappen was in first place. We had uh, Hamilton in second, Bottas third, Perez in fourth, Norris, great result for him in fifth place. Sainz in sixth, Leclerc in seventh. Leclerc was fantastic. He, uh, well, he had a bit of action at the start of the race, fell down the order and battled his way all the way back to seventh, even though his teammate did better than him, but uh, Leclerc got all the plaudits uh, after the race. Stroll was in eighth. Yeah, that's pretty solid for the Aston Martin. We have Alonso in ninth. More points for Alonso. And Sonoda is in tenth, so Sonoda gets a point as well. And badly needed point I would say because he's under a little bit of pressure as we all know um, the official Formula 1 graphics showing that a lot more nicely than the previous screen and of course driver of the day was Charles Leclerc um, I guess we can't argue with that Verstappen was pretty solid in my opinion but uh, Leclerc had all of the excitement uh, with the overtaking and everything else and making his way back up through the grid uh, to seventh place. So well done, Charles Leclerc, driver of the day. And this is how the championship stands after the Styrian Grand Prix. So Verstappen now on 156 points, with Hamilton on 138. Then we have Perez, who is still in third place. Norris is still in fourth, and Bottas is still in fifth. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's definitely not ideal for Bottas to be so far down. Bottas should be in third place in the championship. That 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 is what he should be aiming for, third or second. You know, it, just just behind Hamilton, I think. I think that's realistically where Bottas should be. Um, Leclerc and Sainz, you can see, are pretty solid. Um, they have a good uh, a good mix of points there. Gasly is uh, Gasly is in eighth place in the championship, and Gasly doing very well this season. Ricardo is in ninth. Now you know you can argue, okay, great, he's in the top ten, but um, he only has thirty four points by comparison to what his teammate has, so he's still having issues with uh, with getting bedded in in the McLaren team, and we'll we'll talk about that in um, in a little bit. Um, looking at the Constructors' Championship. Wait, before we do that, just to reiterate, four race wins in a row now for Red Bull. They're not four Max Verstappen wins, but four wins uh, regardless for Red Bull. Um, of course, Sergio Perez won in Azerbaijan, um, which, is, uh, which is one of the better wins this season, I guess. Um, Max Verstappen was going to win that until his tire went pop. Um, but that's the way it goes. That's Formula One. You can't predict these things. Okay, so here is the constructor standings um, as I had anticipated. Um, Red Bull, look at that. Red Bull, 252 points of Red Bull ahead of Mercedes. Um, and that's all down to Verstappen and Perez. We saw it in the Drivers' Championship. So they're, they're beating their respective counterparts at the Mercedes team. McLaren then 120 points with Ferrari on 108 points. So McLaren I wouldn't say firmly in third place, but there's a real battle happening there between Ferrari and McLaren. Um, and they just seem to keep trading points from race to race. And it's it's actually, it's a really nice battle. I know the focus is really on Red Bull and Mercedes at the moment, but uh, this is this is one to keep an eye on as well. Alfa Tori, mm, predominantly true Gasly's points there in fifth place. And they actually have a bit of a battle with Aston Martin now. So after Vettel got uh, second place at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, it has really helped them. And you, you see Stroll was in the points again. Uh, at the Styrian Grand Prix, so it, it helps. Alpine are some way off. Alfa Romeo have two points, and Williams and Haas are in no man's land. But, you know, speaking about that, of course, George Russell was doing very well. He was in the points until, um, you know, he started to have some issues. They told him to back off a little bit, and uh, then he had a pit stop nightmare yet again. And it seems sometimes like George Russell has no luck. 
you you have to temper that a little bit against the fact that uh, at Imala he seemed to be doing quite well and caused that really bad accident with uh, with Valtteri Bottas. Um, so yes, I kind of buy into how he doesn't have any luck. Uh, if you think about what he almost did for Mercedes last season, uh, where he almost won the uh, the race in Bahrain. But part of me still feels like Mercedes didn't want him to win that. Uh, I don't know. I know it's controversial. I know it's all conspiracy theories and everything else like that. But uh, yeah, I just, I just, I, I wasn't feeling it. I just, I, I didn't feel like Mercedes did everything they could to ensure his win. And um, the pit stops were a little bit too uh, convenient. So there you go anyway uh, let me know in the comments what you think of that uh, maybe we can do a video about that in the future but mm, yeah put on your tinfoil hats for that one uh sorry yes getting off topic ever so slightly um let's come back to the race itself and oh, we don't need to see that we want to see this one yeah the uh the classification um where do I start on this one? Um, so we've already mentioned Russell. So let's talk about Gasly. Gasly, oh, you know, Russell had a nightmare. Gasly also had a nightmare. So Gasly got hit about just about everybody off the start. Um, kind of trying to mind his own business, but got sandwiched in between a few cars. Uh, it was mostly Charles Leclerc that actually um, hit him. And that was what caused the damage for Charles Leclerc that dropped him down the order that he had to fight back from. Uh, in the end of it all, Gasly had no chance to fight back. He had no chance to fight back because uh, his car was too badly damaged. So he was out of the race. It was disappointing because it looked like he had so much speed there. Uh, I personally, I was intrigued to see what he could do last weekend. So hopefully he qualifies it well again um, at the Austrian Grand Prix this coming weekend. And um, yeah, more of the same from Gasly. Put the foot down. Let's see what he can do. And just please, please, please avoid the cars. Um, it would be good to see a good result from Gasly there. Uh, all right, uh, so I have a couple of notes written down here. Yeah, Norris, so very clear from Norris early on in the race when he let, uh, he let the Red Bull and the Merc go past him. He was not racing those guys and he didn't even attempt to race them. There is quite a gap now, I think, between Mercedes, Red Bull, and then the rest of the field. Uh, I, I was hoping that uh, McLaren would get more into that battle, but they do seem to be dropping away a little bit. I wonder if they can come back into that battle as the season goes on. So we're hearing now that there will be upgrades coming soon for Mercedes, but after that, they've stopped developing the car for this year. And we know already there's the likes of Haas who said they're just not developing this year. They're concentrating on the new regulations next year. So I wonder if McLaren will continue to develop the car whilst Mercedes won't be developing the car. Will that bring them then closer to Mercedes? Um, and in turn, I don't know. I don't know how much development Red Bull are putting into the car this season, but you would have to assume with the great start that they have, they are going to keep uh, keep it up and try and get this championship. Uh, why not? You know, it's a great opportunity for them. Why why throw this away for next season? You have your opportunity for the championship right here. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for Red Bull. Um, I, I I actually don't believe that Mercedes are going to. Uh, stop development i just i just can't imagine it you know this is this is mercedes with all the money and all the resource and uh, and they've dominated the sport for the basically all of the hybrid era and they're saying that they're not going to develop the car any further this season i'm not buying it i'm sorry i'm just i'm just not this this is possibly another tactic uh, like where hamilton says that his tires are killing him oh no we can't go on these tires and he wins the race so that's typical hamilton um Next up, uh, Hamilton actually almost lost it as well. He saved the car really well from a spin. Um, they were on board with him. It was like a live shot and uh, he's, he almost lost the back of the car. So it was good save from Hamilton. So he was actually, ironically, struggling a little bit with tires, uh, it would appear. Uh, Russell was unlucky, yeah, we've covered that. 
uh, the Leclerc fight back. We covered that as well. Hamilton got the fastest lap. I completely forgot to mention that. Um, so he did put on a, a fresh set of rubber towards the end of the race and set the fastest lap. It was either the second last or the last lap. I can't remember exactly which one it was. I think it was the last lap. So he got the fastest lap. Um, so that was a point for him. Um, a little bit of a swing in his favor, I suppose. Um, they had attempted to do it in Red Bull with uh, with Perez. It does kind of make you wonder if there was an alternative strategy that Red Bull could have used there to uh, to ensure that they would get the fastest lap. But I think in the end, Perez was really intent on catching Bottas and overtaking him. Uh, and he didn't do it. He didn't do it. Um, uh, it brings me to my next point. Bottas did very, very well in this race. Uh, he, he obviously, he started with the three place penalty uh, but he fought back to finish ahead of Perez and behind his teammate which I guess is the maximum you can ask from Bottas at the moment if Hamilton can't beat Verstappen then I don't think first or I don't think Bottas can beat uh, Verstappen so that wouldn't be a realistic expectation of him um, he was in trouble though you know he did finish ahead of Perez but if there were one or two more laps in that race Perez would have had him um, but, but we can't go into that. There weren't one or two more laps, so it is what it is. Um, yeah, Red Bull are on a really good run, um, as you can see here from the result, and you can see from the championship standings as well. Can they carry that into the next weekend? I don't see why not, unless, unless there is rain, um, and I haven't seen the weather forecast yet for the weekend, and it's kind of hard to tell from this far out. I guess it, I guess it is Thursday now, so we, we possibly will have a better idea. So um, I might look into that a little bit later, but I never really believed the weather forecast. It was supposed to be wet last weekend for the Styrian Grand Prix, and it just wasn't, so there you go. Um now Ricardo is Ricardo in trouble and this is this is the debate that goes on and on and on here we go through all of these slides again so you've seen the championship stands let's just get straight to it um right so is Ricardo in trouble what's going on with Ricardo so Ricardo sits ninth in the championship at the moment and he has 34 points as as we've already seen his teammate by comparison uh, Lando Norris is sitting in fourth place in the championship. Really respectable when you see that he's actually ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Um, and uh, he has 86 points and it's, well, it isn't quite triple of what uh, Ricardo has, but it's getting there. It's getting there. And th there were glimpses um, at certain races this season that Ricardo might be getting to grips with the car and you know he, he might be able for this but uh yeah it's one step forward two steps back is how it feels like he got very unlucky with the start he did have a, a small bit of an issue with the car that dropped him back but he wasn't able to fight back mclaren has the mercedes engine and the car and they they should have straight line speed and be able to get past other cars um but it's whew, I, I it's not looking good for ricardo now it is still relatively early in the championship so we're we're technically supposed to have 23 rounds in this championship whether or not we will or won't that that's another question you know it's all down to covid and which races remain turkey is back on the calendar again which is great news um but um we we've seen other drivers such as alonso and Carlos Sainz and they have gotten to grips or would appear to at least have gotten to grips with their cars you know Alonso isn't the whipping boy anymore for uh, for Ocon um, of course they could prove me wrong at the next race but he, he does seem to have finally gotten the upper hand there and uh, Sainz is immensely competitive for his teammate if you look at the points there there's only eight points between them and this is Charles Leclerc who's been embedded in this in this Ferrari team this is third season there um, so really impressive from Sainz what he's doing uh, and then coupled with that Daniel Ricciardo really needs to be fighting with Sainz and Leclerc this is important for McLaren's championship battle in the constructors as well for third place um, so it's kind of like a, a Ferrari sandwich at the moment you can see Lando is up there Daniel is is down there and we have uh, both of the Ferraris in between and a little bit of a uh, Valtteri Bottas and Pierre Gasly dressing as well on that uh, on that sandwich but you know what I'm, I'm what I'm getting at here um, 
So I, I'm a big fan of Ricardo. He's entertaining on and off the track. Um, there's always something hilarious happening with Daniel Ricardo. Uh, he was more than a match for Max Verstappen in the Red Bull as well. So he definitely has that ability. He was a little bit slow to get to grips with the Renault as well, I think. Uh, but he got there. So I'm, I'm, I'm still very hopeful. But uh, will he be able to catch Norris? Norris is in great form this season. Will he be able to catch Norris if Norris keeps up this form? Probably not. Probably not. Um, but there's definitely more to come from Ricardo. I hope he can do it. I hope he gets to grips with the car soon. And, you know, if one of the McLarens is actually going to win a race this season, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Ricardo that managed to, to pull off that win. Uh, and it's not beyond the rooms of possibility. We saw Gasly won a race last season. Um, Carlos Sainz actually in the McLaren came second in that very race. Um, and there were podium finishes as well for McLaren. So, so it's it's totally doable. It, it just it could happen. Maybe uh, maybe Bottas will have another bad weekend. Uh, Perez a little bit off the pace and Hamilton and Verstappen crash into each other. Uh, we haven't had that crash between those two yet, but I feel like it's coming. It's coming. It's on the way. Uh, and the way the championship stands at the moment, that will be an advantage to Verstappen if it does happen. Nothing to lose, really, in a you know, head-to-head -head situation. So Hamilton needs to be cognizant of that. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off topic with this. Um, the next thing, yeah, just let's, uh, let's stay on this. Um, McLaren and Ferrari. Look at how tight that is at the moment. A uh, grand total of 12 points between them. And when you have two drivers in a race, 12 points is nothing, um, especially when you're consistently in the points. That's why, as I said, it's so important for Ricardo to uh, to try and uh, get his act together. But um, yeah, I, nothing more I can say about that. Um, I, I was really disappointed with uh, Ricardo's result from the Styrian Grand Prix. Um, he has good memories from that race circuit from his Red Bull days. I thought maybe he would do a little bit more. He didn't. So it is what it is. But uh, yeah, that that's that's what we're up against. Um, I think that's it. That's everything from my side for um, the Styrian Grand Prix. So the race itself, I guess it's a three out of five, that race. There wasn't a ton of action, but it wasn't immensely boring. I, I did quite enjoy the race. There wasn't as much strategy as there was in the uh, French Grand Prix. Um, that didn't really come into play as much. There wasn't a, a very powerful undercut or anything, but it was it was good race. And I am looking forward to the Austrian Grand Prix this coming weekend. And if it rains, then it could be even more exciting. Um, if it doesn't rain, and qualifying goes to plan i would guess it'll be red bull uh, winning the race and actually i would be hopeful that perez can get second or third as well but maybe not um i need to check if they're actually changing the tire compounds or something like that just to mix it up a little bit this weekend because if they're not then we've kind of seen everybody's hand already um yeah but that's that's what it is okay so as i said um Please uh, like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell if you are inclined to do so and like your notifications on your phone or your iPad or whatever you're watching from. Um, thank you very much for watching this video and uh, we'll see you again really, really soon.